okay so today we continue analyzing the design principles that we started to introduce last week uh, and then we'll move on to more uh, detailed uh, as a lower level guidelines hmm? at least having a look at them uh, last week uh, we stopped here at this um, principle number four was the design dialogues to wield the closure I uh, found uh, an example uh, maybe you are familiar with this kind of uh, water dispensers that are uh, through all throughout uh, the city of Torino and also the surrounding uh, uh, villages and so on and these are uh, a good or bad example of uh, uh, a device an interface that doesn't really uh, yield closure I like the stay so what this is the um, uh, water with gas dispenser so you need to put your bottle down press the button and then the water comes down only if you uh, have this card on the top right here inserted into the reader so sorry for the picture it was uh, it was nice uh, when, uh, when I took it and uh, <coughs> so you insert the card you take the water you press the button one two three one time for each bottle then you take your bottles you go away and you forget uh, the the card there so personally I already lost two of them they cost five euros each so I could have uh, uh, nearly the, the, the yearly <laughs> um, amount of water costs uh, um. so this one one other example like like we discussed last time uh, about uh, the ATM uh, um, cash dispensers where the last uh, action you should perform so re withdrawing your card is not the one that gives you the closure is not the action where uh, the user is satisfied with the goal that he started with at the beginning so I go there to get my water so once I have the water my goal is finished in this case at least by training on myself now I develop the habit of uh, withdrawing the card while the last bottle is loading so I press the button I withdraw the card immediately put it in my pocket while the uh, so I don't I, I'm not forgetting it anymore okay so but this is an example of an interface which is not well designed uh, uh, probably one possibility should be not to be able to insert the card there because if you leave it there you will forget it if you ha have to keep it in your hands just maybe since it's a it's a contactless reader so you just have to put it here why do I need to show the card and press the button just show the card here and then the water will start and you have your card in your hands so you will never forget it you de never deposit it anywhere and so you you have your card in your hand so you can put it away before having the water in your bottle so it's another no, these are small things no, where it should be clear where the uh, task begins what is the action for performing them what's ne the next step and what's the last step especially the last one is the most important one and the people that design this stuff are really not uh, into uh, human interaction mm -hmm. and uh, you see them because they recently added another uh, possibility of paying for the water so you can pay it with your in the post the, the point of sale reader you can pay you with your bank with your, with your credit card with any contactless bank card that you may have so it's good because you have your own card you don't have to buy the special card for smart and uh, well, uh, you won't lo lose it because you will have more you attribute more importance to your credit card so will, you will be more careful and so on and it's a contactless so actually you should have just to swap it there okay so when you go to the supermarket when you pay, pay with your contactless card what you do once you uh, are paying you just show the card and put it on the reader and get it back that's it no that was too easy this is the notes that you should follow if you really want to use your your card in this reader for getting water or oh, remember we are you are talking about paying 20 cents 40 cents depending on how many bottles you have it's a 
procedure which is really complex complicated mm, first you have you say that the car sorry for being in italian but uh, the car must be contactless uh, must be contactless car here it says but then for registering you have two steps registering the card and for registering it you must have first to insert it in serici here and then you pull it out and then you present it in a contactless way so you I, I i never tried it because i I'm, I'm sure it will not work and so when also when when you need to to withdraw some water you insert the card press start and then you may recharge the card or not and then for charging it you must extract it and uh, present it in a contest way so the same card must be sometimes inserted sometimes presented totally nonsense I'm betting nobody is going through all of this uh, uh, procedure for getting water. So it's, it's terrible. Hmm? The idea is good, but the execution is totally mm, unintuitive. Hmm? If you want, uh, you, you, you also have the, the, um, the machine where they are giving you these cards. The procedure for getting a new one is also uh, very uh, it's a maze hmm? it's made so because you have to first to insert the air and then press the button and then insert the, the money and so on so all of these people are designing stuff where the you know the instruction list is so long and so complex that nobody is ever willing to try it hmm? and uh, so all the interaction sequences not clear where to start and why to how to proceed from step to step and when it's ended so this is a new one uh, the pre principle number eight uh, present preventing errors hmm? so it's very important to be able to correct the errors but if we can intervene beforehand before the error is even uh, performed so e making it impossible or difficult for the user to make errors hmm? so for example if there is a uh, one button whose action is not valid at this point so you cannot click on this button because it doesn't make sense so you can uh, until you enter your name you cannot save it for example the save button should not be enabled until the name is inserted so instead of letting you click the button and then showing you an, an error message uh, the name is missing you just don't let me press the button so in a, uh, in, in advance uh, you disable all those interface elements that that would that would cause uh, some error condition if they were uh, they are act activated you don't remove them from the interface so for example if you have an application hmm, uh, word or powerpoint uh, you see always you always see the full menus the full um, tool t um, the full icons in the toolbar but some of them are grayed out they cannot be used at this moment so you see them but in this particular context they make no sense they are not applicable so they are shown in a disabled way and so in, in this way they are show uh, the system is showing me its state saying okay in this state i cannot do this action and at the same time it's preventing me for asking for something that would not be possible and would create an error hmm? um, and of course uh, if an error happens uh, always try to simplify as much as possible the correction of the error so if i fill a form with five fields uh, and only one is wrong uh, try to attract my attention to the wrong field and make its correction as easy as possible uh, and let me you know, uh, don't force me to recheck all of them or to reinsert uh, any uh, old data and so on hmm? and the last one is to say that uh, if the user makes some error that error should not modify the application state so it should not something that should be taken into account by the system so if i'm entering some wrong data or if i'm trying to execute some invalid command then the system should behave like i did nothing like i never entered that data or like i never asked for that function so an error should not create any action on the system until the error is corrected and then the action is taken so even if you have partial data 
and some of this data is valid and some of the data is not valid don't use the valid data even if only one item is is wrong first ensure that everything is right and then process because the user should not be left wondering whether some data has already been taken into account or not hmm? uh, i think there's a lot of uh, experience in this error handling and so you can draw a lot of good examples from from good uh, applications hmm? uh, a stupid example here it says that if your username is a codice fiscale then insert it with the cash in capital letters so if if the username is a codice fiscale and if it's not what else can it be it's not clear is this an application where the username is always your codice fiscale or not or maybe also something else i don't know if you have different ways to log in probably it's better to have different screens or different fields so that you know exactly what to enter where in many cases you also have, uh, have an example shown okay your id is something similar to this it's your email but then if uh, for some reason unknown to me the quality fiscality should be inserted always in capital letters can't the computer do it by, by itself can i enter the quality fiscale in whatever case they want lowercase uppercase mixed one and then convert the system would convert it automatically to uppercase why not it's one less possibility of a mistake the mistake of a person entering the quality fiscale in uh, in lowercase and then getting an error this is not valid you should enter it in capital are you stupid hmm? you can do it by yourself it's just no uh, that validation so and you need to to add, add instructions with the risk that the users don't read it or don't understand it or don't execute it correctly hmm? it would be much easier and does it mean that the username is case sensitive so in the case when this is not uh, um, a codice fiscale but it's something else how should it enter it in lower case if it's not a codice fiscale or in uppercase or is it sensitive to the casing of the name is it case sensitive for ids that are not codice fiscale i don't know we never know okay and so it's a, in, in a way it, the, this interface is doing nothing to help me entering this uh, information and by the way it's not related to this uh, um, to this uh, principle of error prevention did you forget the password click here okay it's quite normal probably except that we never see stuff like this in 2019 click a quick click here the, when is the last time you saw click a quick click here in a website recently right now we have uh, i forgot my password as a link and if i forgot the, my password i click on that link that's it less work less mistakes less uh, uh, misunderstanding Sei un professionista della salute? Are you a health professional? Because this was a web taken from a website with um, uh, online courses for doctors, uh, nurses, and whatever. Okay? So in the login of the website. So if you have a, a health professional, you must register. Or you must register? You can register? Or you should register only the first time? If I'm a health professional, okay, I register. And then the next time, should I log in like everybody else or should I go to this register? Is the registration for first time users? So every user the first time can, should register as the registration semantic meaning implies? Or is the registration a step for 
health professionals to, to log in. We don't know. Hmm? Uh, so this are, is a mismatch between the semantic level and the syntactic level. So uh, syntactic is uh, something like first time registration probably, but then the question is, mi is misleading, so it doesn't tell you whatever, okay? You find a lot of, uh, of mistakes like that. This one is difficult to implement, but it's also equally important. Let's say, let's call it the control Z uh, rule, principle, permit the reversal of actions. So whenever I do an action that has some side effects, I should be able to undo those effects uh, to take the system back to the previous state. So if I know that some, anything I do can be reversed, can be undone, then I'm much more open to try to see what happens, to explore the interface. If something if something's wrong, I just go back one step. I just undo. When you're writing something, you're testing some formatting, you're testing some colors. Then at the end, if you mix it up uh, or you make some bad design or bad, so you just hit Ctrl Z sometimes, and then you will go back step by step to the, to the original version. So you are free to experiment because you know you can always get back. Hmm? If you knew that changing the font was, it's, would be an, an irreversible action, so you could not easily go back instead of remembering exactly what uh, the font was at the, the beginning, then it would be much more difficult. Or you would be much more reluctant to try out that, uh, that action. Hmm? You would put a lot of uh, effort uh, before uh, uh, really executing that action. And of course, depending on the case, uh, reversibility can be seen at different levels. Okay, a single action, a single click, a single button. So in the browser, the back button is there for a reason. And a lot of modern uh, dynamic single page, whatever websites don't work well with the back button in the browser. They force you to find the way back inside the interface and not in the general uh, web, uh, let's say, uh, paradigm eh? uh, of forward and backward between the pages. Uh, at that entry task, so I already entered some data, I should be able to delete it. Um, um, a very good example is, for example, Gmail. If I'm not, uh, if I'm not wrong, when you send an email, it pops up a message saying, okay, this mail has been sent, undo. So for a very limited amount of time, some seconds, you can undo that sending. So there, the message the mail has been sent is not really true. It has been queued for sending and then giving you some grace period of some seconds to change your mind if you want. If you want to change your mind, click there and you will go back to the composition window. Hmm? So recalling an email is Maybe if the email starts uh, when it's not complete or where you didn't read it through uh, very well, it would then be embarrassing. So in that case, uh, you know that if by mistake, by accident, you are clicking on send, uh, then you will always be able to take it back hmm, in a way. So uh, I said that it's complex to implement because every time you do some modification, you always save the previous state or the previous set of states, or delay the execution in the code, I mean, in the database. <laughs> delay the execution of the action until some period where, where you give the, to the user the, the opportunity of uh, uh, recalling the action back. So from the implementation point of view, it's quite heavy. But for the user, it's very relaxing being able to work with a system that can tolerate your errors. You can make an error, or it's not an error in this case. It's a perfe perfectly valid action. It's not a wrong data that has been entered. It's the right data, right information. The, ma the email is correct. It has the subject, it has the destination, it has a content, but this content is wrong, or you didn't check it anymore uh, completely, or you didn't finish it. So you're asking for a perfectly normal action, but it was not uh, right for you. Mm? It's not a, a mistake in using the system. In some case, in the f you can prevent 
sending an email without a, su a subject, for example. If you didn't write any subject, uh, the email program would disable the send, pro the send button. But if the subject is there, the body is there, you can send it. But maybe the mistake is yours. In that case, it's not a mistake in using the, the interface, but in executing your task. And the system is still forgiving. Even for if from the system point of view, everything is right, looks right, it gives you the possibility of stepping back. Hmm? So it's uh, quite useful for the users. Hmm? Um, number seven, keep users in control. And uh, it's more perceptual issue. So the users should feel they are driving the interaction and they are not just passive uh, actors uh, in some steps uh, that the computer is generating randomly or in a strange way. So the user must feel that the application is going where the user wants. Uh, and if the user asks for, for something, there should be always be a feedback. We already have in principle number three. The, the system should do something, should not ignore the user actions. Uh, the system uh, should not force the user to do a lot of uh, uh, tedious tasks. So don't, uh, if you have to, I don't know, uh, delete 20 images, don't ask me to select an image, click delete, click confirm, go back, find the next one, and so on, because it will, in many cases you have to do that. It give me a possibility for maybe selecting a group and then deleting them all, all, all at once. So that it will match more closely my idea of deleting those pictures. I never think I need to delete this picture and then I need to delete this picture and then I need to delete this picture. It's not how we, how we think. We think of an action at a higher level and uh, we feel that the system is supporting us in speaking our language, in providing functionality in the way we think. Otherwise, we are just forced to, to find a very narrow street uh, that the system is forcing me to go through. It's not my street, it's not my way. Hmm? It's the system way. This one surprises us. Avoid surprises in change or changes in familiar behavior. This happens maybe when uh, an application is changed. You have an update in your application, your website, and so, okay, there was a button here. Where is that now? It moved. Or it maybe it just changed color, or it might just change label or icon. You don't find what was there before. You remember when uh, WhatsApp changed the way to reply to messages. So previously, to reply to a message, you have to select it and then start typing. And so it created a reply. And now to reply to a message, you have to swipe the message right, and then we'll create a reply for you. Apart that, swiping right uh, for replying uh, is totally unintuitive because the icon for reply is a left arrow okay but and e even in the uh, whatsapp interface this they, you have the left arrow for replying but you have to swipe right to execute the left arrow action good for that uh, but at the beginning uh, you felt uh, it was it felt strange something that was there is not there anymore it changed so there was a tool tip saying, oh, what? now when you want to reply, you need to, so you have to learn something. The, it was so non-intuitive and non-discoverable that they had to teach you. Why? Don't know. Why the wrong, the, the old behavior was not right because it's not being used for anything else. Selecting a message and typing now does nothing. It's not that they use that interaction modality for enabling some, uh, something else. I don't know. I will probably never understand it, but um, I read uh, an article this morning in the train, but I couldn't read it well, uh, that's saying that the new version of the Apple Mail for the Mac changed something in the interface that caused people to delete uh, mails by mistake. So some, I don't know what, I know the details, maybe we, we look for it uh, in, the, in the travel back and uh, uh, that, that so an action that was previously an innocent action now is interpreted as a delete very bad hmm? of course you have the undo but then first you, you first have to realize that you deleted some emails well when you thought you thought maybe you were archiving them or whatever hmm? 
so it's not nice of course uh, this also implies undo redo cancel canceling when i start a task i should be able to opt out at any time hmm? not i not should not be forced to go to the end if i change my mind uh, in between i should be able to save partial work uh, if i want to continue later because the idea is that i should feel that the system is ready for me when i want and in the way i want not uh, the other way around memory load uh, human brains are not good at the storing data they are not databases they are good for uh, for uh, recognizing associations behaviors patterns and so on but raw data are difficult to remember and to, and to recognize so the rule of thumb says that people can remember seven plus or minus two so from five to nine items at a time more than that it's difficult it requires an effort i would say that seven is very high as a number okay if you tell me seven names and i, I, need, to, I need to remember them after a while it's very difficult for me but maybe you, do, you don't need to remember them because you see them in a menu so if you have uh, some options and the list of options is longer then people will have to make an extra effort to analyze the list because it's not um, a bunch of information that they can get it at the same time they can process in parallel the brain is very good at parallel processing so having a lot of stuff in the at the same time but these items should not be too many so if you have a long form to fill for example you can get some information in the first screen some in the second some in the third screen but you can bet that when i you are on the third screen you really don't remember what you wrote in the first one you won't unless you know that and you make an effort for remembering but intuitively you are just throwing away this information our brain has a very short-term memory that is able for like you know to, uh, like a scratch piece of paper that you for doing computation once you do some computation then that result uh, is not useful anymore if you read it back you you don't even understand what it was for three plus five why why did they do this computation i don't know it's 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 old huh? it's it's discarded so uh, the idea is that never require a user on a screen to remember what he did in a previous screen provide all the context information in every screen that will enable the user to reply correctly to the information for for that specific screen hmm? um, and if possible never ask to people stuff that are hard to remember whenever possible if you already have some information use it if you ever have our, if you already have some list of possibility use it present to the user the choice selecting instead of inserting you can select among the list of possible alternatives instead of inserting the name when you choose a course you enroll to the course at the beginning here you don't have to read the name of the code of the course uh, and then insert that code you are able to f to browse through all the uh, elements and select the one that you want or maybe search because you remember part of the name or part of the code search and then you find the list so you jo just have to <coughs> choose between what is shown and not remember what you have to enter um, there's a strange example here you have noticed that re uh, recently a lot of websites have moved from a very traditional login screen username password login button to a two-stage login first you, they ask you for the login name and then they ask you for the password i hate it because it's one extra step it's good for onboarding for the first experience of a person on a website or an application so let's take them step by step one step at a time because especially in the first step you have uh, the possibility of creating a new account uh, if the user doesn't have a login and so on hmm? for example or even the the wording here is careful sign in to continue or create account for example i always found confusing the websites that have two buttons sign in and sign up 
okay i don't know if for a native english speaker sign up is semantically different enough from sign in but i guess it's not so much for non-native speaker actually they are quite confusing so in this case you see sign in and then create account which is not two small variations but two very different actions okay and then uh, so in a way i need to enter my password and for doing that i need to remember the account that i entered in the first place but fortunately people at google at google are not bad they are copying that information here they're repeating this information this so this is uh, some information that i just typed in one second ago but for asking me for the password they remind me what i did in the previous screen so i don't have to remember it hmm? something that is in the word in the screen instead of something that must be kept in my mind so when you ask for a confirmation for additional data for specifications always summarize what it's all about never have a, a screen that says do you confirm all the information that you entered yes or no which information i already forgot okay do you confirm this information that you just entered so you can you have the option to read it by the way we never read it anyway because we are sure we didn't make any mistakes but except when paying huh, when entering money otherwise you we just click yes without because we are good we don't make mistakes but that's a separate issue so in this case yes there are some uh, split interface where some information depends on previous ones but the interface is good at this because it remembers me what to do i find it probably uh, and also the forgot password is good here and forgot email so he they separated two different forgetting levels i don't remember what's my account and i remember my account but i forgot my password <coughs> sorry in many other cases they are in the same page and so it's more confusing for first-time users it's not very good for experienced users hmm? okay so this was one example of uh, eight uh, design principles that were um presented by schneiderman uh, uh, generally there are other lists other principles hmm? uh, i reported also a list of principles by norman and nielsen uh, i just comment the ones that are different because of, of course there's a lot of overlapping between this list of these possibilities so um, B Benyon and uh, did a work by putting together principles and suggestions by norman and nielsen uh, which are the real uh, two let's say big men in this area that, uh, that for which they created that actually the domain of human computer interaction and they uh, divided into four categories so they have four groups of design principles and instead of, of the group there are some uh, uh, some some uh, specific principles so the first group is uh, learnability it's a very wide principle system should be able should be easy to learn and to remember hmm? and one of these principles that wasn't in the list of uh, schneiderman principles is uh, visibility the system should make its own internal state visible the system the system should make all the possible actions that the user can perform visible just by looking at the screen the user should be able to understand everything that the system needs to tell him and everything that he can do on that screen so we i always know what the system is doing but consistency we already discussed uh, familiarity use the language and symbols that are that people that the users will understand depending on my users they may have some background they may recognize some symbols and they may not recognize other kind of symbols Okay, so try to use those symbols that are that apply to the background that are already known to the background of my specific users. Don't start strange icons or strange conventions or strange wordings. Call the the objects or the information with the name that the user would call it. Hmm? Uh, 
uh, affordance is an important principle it says that uh, any object or any interface can be used in a way in many ways probably but uh, the the way in which they can use some interface let's, th let's also think about physical objects it's, easy, it's easier depends on their shape or their properties for example what can i do i can bring it in this way i never think of of using because it will fall it's not uh, it's not natural okay it's not normal so the, sh the shape the size of this microphone tells me how to use it okay that red bar there in the door you can only push it you can do anything else you can push it with your hands also with the other parts of your body at the level uh, there are many um, and that's been designed for that reason when in panic you should not stop and wonder or oh, should they push or pull or uh, turn the lever or whatever just do the only possible action with a red bar push it they don't need to write push on the bar you don't need an instruction you don't need to, you don't need to think the only thing you can do is just pushing it if you have a button there for the lights the light switch you can only press it there's nothing else you can do so the physical shape for example of, a, of an object tells me what i can do with that object how, how should i handle it okay some objects that are more difficult to use are more ambiguous okay and so I, I have to stop and think or maybe read some instructions to understand how to use them so this is the principle of, of affordance the shape and the visibility the perception basically in general so how i perceive an object or an interface element tells me how i can use it so if it's a button on the screen i can press that button if it looks if it looks like a button and it behaves like a button i know i can press it if it looks like a, an empty rectangle with a blinking cursor and i can type in it okay i should type i will not drag it i will not try to resize it i will not try to do anything else rather than typing that hmm? uh, i have a physical example of the concept of affordance that i found in a, in a city that was in catalonia uh, this is a waste uh, collection point where you go and you throw away your waste and there are many categories don't read try to tell me what the labels are so this is a lamp it's this is the easy one the, and the other one also is uh, uh, the other light bulb uh, the the modern one new or yes there were no, no leds at the time no there was some uh, okay this is a, a spray can probably and the other ones are more difficult these are batteries more or less hmm? this a cd if people are still using cds around this one it's, it's a printer cartridge it's an ink cartridge for printers yeah clear and this one uh, oh <laughs> this is very strange it's a mobile phone so if you ever need to throw away your mobile phone you, you know where to go and so there are these icons that are not the best in the world but there also are labels okay so they will explain so they say the message is, is, is double uh, if you don't recognize the icon you have the, the 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 label that will tell you and additionally the shape of the of the boxes where you have to to throw away uh, div, uh, is shaped like the object so uh, for a cd you have just one vertical uh, space for the uh, batteries you have different shapes corresponding to the lo larger smaller batteries and so on 
and, uh, and for the other one they could not be so creative uh, and they put only rectangles or different shapes and sizes so there's a reinforcement of uh, the text uh, the icon and the shape uh, of the place where you need to enter your uh, object that will tell you what to do so if i have a cd it will never fit into this hole you need to put in the first one because it's the only one that fits <coughs> it tells me where to put it hmm? of course there was a person that threw a, a neon light into the print cartridge slot okay so not everything is is foolproof okay, uh, okay. going forward with norman um, principles effectiveness is another group of uh, uh, large principles saying okay people should uh, do stuff should perform something useful we are not just for clicking randomly we are therefore uh, reaching our goals so the interface should be effective uh, and uh, if i have a website or an application with many sections many functionalities i should be able to move from one functionality to the other quickly understand when i am when i when where i am and understand how can i go to a different section or to a different part of the website easily and quickly hmm? and this uh, has to do with uh, menu systems with navigation system breadcrumbs uh, so all the indication of where you are uh, the consistent labeling of sections and so on hmm? um, control uh, the i always say that the interaction with a computer is like a ping pong match okay the ball is always in either of the two fields you always know where the ball is who's the next uh, to hit the ball the same goes for interfaces it should always be clear whether the next step is the users or the systems whether the system is waiting for the user to do something or whether the, the user is waiting for the system to do something this should be always clear especially when you're doing some maybe complex operation you enter some data you click search at that point are you expected to do something or just wait and wait how much until the first result appears until the page is filled so there is just th that long period of time maybe one second or two where you actually you, you don't know whether it should be performed or you are allowed to perform more actions or it's just the, the, the system's turn and you have to wait and so always try to put maybe uh, um, delay uh, animations say okay let's please wait uh, or until the, the action is complete uh, or some indication that actually right now the system did this part and now it's your turn don't wait anymore nothing more will happen so the, it was a long action it took time to feel but now it's over hmm? and so the control goes back to the user okay we already discussed feedback and then there are other principles but more or less are repetitions of what you already saw the recovery from errors constraints to prevent errors so they have different names for the same basic concepts actually um and this one the last one accommodation <coughs> is a new one that talks about uh, actually the pleasure of using a system so it should be nice looking not just uh, hard measures about uh, errors uh, performance and whatever but also should be nice uh, attractive and so on and uh, also the language should be polite they say uh to the user so it should be co a comfortable place to go in a way and plus there is another uh, issue of flexibility which is a different um, a much larger topic uh, of being uh, able to adapt to people with different or special needs uh, we'll discuss that in a special chapter uh, further on so um and i, I found this list uh, quite useful probably um because it tells me uh, how to convert uh, how to transform okay something that is difficult to use into something that is simpler to use 
which is one of the goals uh, it's a way of uh, reframing the some of the principles in a practical way in a operational way use knowledge in the world and knowledge in the head so when the user needs to do some action or to enter some data to select something the user should be able to perform the action based on what he sees on the screen what he sees on the environment possibly in, the, in some cases and what he knows what he knows without effort so you can rely on this kind of information so especially knowledge in the in the world is something that uh, is uh, something you can control because it's what you are showing to the user and knowledge in the head is the background of the user the, the thing that they already know when possible for every task simplify always think about how can i simplify it how can i remove one step i can how can i remove one interaction uh, do i really need this information to proceed so try to be minimalist as much as possible visibility it's already one of the principles getting the mappings right mapping between text icon meaning semantic meaning you remember the different layers the syntax the semantics and the cognitive level uh, and so being consistent in the vertical level exploit the power of constraints hmm? constraints are, are like we said something that will ha help me uh, make some error so for example I will always the microphone I need to put it correctly in order for it to charge its battery I can put it in this way because it doesn't fit okay the shape of, of this is so that I can only put it in one way or, or the other and they are both correct any other place any other way I would try it will not fit okay it's a physical constraint that tells me how to perform an action without thinking without considering that okay and we can do that also on our interfaces so if something cannot be done it cannot be done wrongly hmm? if of course it makes sense design always thinking that the user may make mistakes so an error especially an interaction error is not a special case it's the normal case the special case is when everything goes right so always think first uh, okay now uh, the user enters this data and he needs to correct them <coughs> first think about the bad case and then the second you know uh, this uh, with a second level of priority uh, consider the normal case the good case mm -hmm. and when everything has face standardized so if something cannot be made really intuitive or uh, self-understanding or error prone or whatever we not we need to rely on to on with to the some standards uh, peop, some information that people have been taught in the past like the example of the hamburger icon that i told you some some weeks ago it's not it's nothing intuitive but it's there and we have been taught to use it in some way they told us use it in this way and that we learned it so we can use it in our designs because we know users already know it because it's standard in a way hmm? and uh, of course you cannot usually make the effort for standardizing new things uh, you can use things that are already being standardized by others because the users already know them uh, if you want uh, to to dig more there is this other guy uh, Bruce Tognazzini Tog, that created a website uh, with a lot of other principles of interaction there are these are the titles you see the more or less they are the same information but every time you, you browse something new you find some some uh, new details some new uh, information that can be useful so it's very easy and the good of this uh, I, I won't of course go through all the list but the nice part of this I, I will just pick one randomly that it gives you where are they I chose the wrong one because it's all words that gives you also no sorry okay there are examples also here but 
i won't uh, spend too much time but you have the links uh, if you want so this was the set of possible design principles okay the rules for some of them the implementation of the rules is easy or we can understand how to use this principle in designing our interface for some of them it's more difficult because there are more conceptual principles okay how do i translate them into html or or my interface so this is what the guidelines are for so if the we say we started from the theories why why thing uh, why our brain working in, some, in, in, a, in a given way the principles what what are the important things to look out for and the guidelines the how how do i implement an interface that will follow the principles uh, we don't go to principles every time we have conventions we have uh, uh, standard ways of doing stuff so if i asking for a confirmation to a user okay there's a dialogue okay and cancel with two buttons it's already in my libraries we, i don't need to think uh, every time uh, how do i ask for a confirmation to the user keep into mind keep in mind uh, uh, the visibility of the system keep in mind the uh, i don't know the the error prevention and so on that problem is already solved it may be solved in different ways according to different technologies because a confirmation on a windows in windows uh, computer is different from a confirmation on a mac for example the order of the button okay and cancel has been swapped so we are more happy and uh, and it's even more difficult more different from a, a smartphone hmm? where the, the concept of a model pop-up is not so nice hmm? so these guidelines uh, are being based uh, uh, are being developed uh, by the different technology developers so if i'm developing an operating system i will tell you a set of guidelines by which you can construct there are some rules basically that you can construct your interfaces by following good design principles using the libraries of this operating system the graphic <laughs> libraries of my operation system so it's the link between the principles the widgets the principles for good interaction design the widget offered by the operating system by the environment and these rules tells you how to use the widgets in a good way hmm? based on best practices hmm? so usually these guidelines emerge because designers or developers that are better than us already develop and try them out and found that some solution is working better than others and so they suggest us their wisdom in a way hmm? so we try to use them in the form of rules easy to follow rules uh, and in some cases we, we, we could think of questioning those rules oh i don't like it but most probably if you do something different unless you have a very very good reason mm, you are making the life more complex for your users because experts know better usually hmm? um, okay in some cases these guidelines are called uh, standards but they really are not you know standard to follow rigidly no it's a, it's a very good uh, uh, guideline to follow set of rules uh, but um, there's no uh, you know there's no nothing really wrong with not following exactly those guidelines if you know what you are doing the problem is that they are specific okay the good and the bad of guidelines are is that they are specific to a given technology so while the principles were general purpose we could talk about the principle for the light switch for the smartphone or for the uh, cal windows calendar application the same principle apply because basically this principle derived from how our brain works guidelines are more about technologies so for example we have this document which is a bit old but uh, on a website that is called usability.gov so we like it that uh, publishes uh, uh, web design and usability guidelines it's a long document and the uh, the emphasis is on research-based web design and usability guidelines so it's not guidelines uh, put together by a person how expert this person can be 
but uh, these authors browse through the scientific publications to research to find uh, positive and negative results uh, and from this literature they compile this list of uh, uh, guidelines and we see that they are often very detailed so uh, let me zoom it a bit so they uh, uh, is there it's a bit old uh, in fact they, what they say that we are extend it to the apps and to the mobile device and so on right now there is there are only for web design hmm? basically so for example you see that the level of uh, description is much more concrete than before okay for example i don't know uh navigation let's pick one it's once uh, something very specific to websites inside navigation we have different guidelines i know place primary navigation menu in the left panel there's no discussion here follow this rule a principal would say uh okay then the navigation should be easy to understand and should uh, be easy to under uh, to, to follow okay in this case they give you a rule put it to the left and uh, this is the guideline the explanation the importance the articles that support these guidelines so if you want you want to go to the source of people that study the issue a good example and in some cases there are also bad examples and the examples are very very important for me you see them in action you see their guidelines in action and so you can try to imagine them so uh, related resources that are other web other guidelines that or other documents that tell the same things is uh, related european guidelines okay there's other guidelines in the same document and so i don't know if you want to widgets let's see what they say about buttons label buttons clearly so they tell me that uh, the level a button should indicate the action that should indicate the action not the reason not the not click me not submit no? but uh, something specific and uh, there are some examples of buttons that tell what happens when you when you press them and so on there are guidelines about layout we'll discuss layout in the in two weeks uh, place important items at the top center uh, for example uh, headings and so on so you it's something very you know, practical where all the, you have examples again the titles of different levels that are shown with different fonts and so on so it's a bit older in terms of examples especially but it's very rich in terms of coverage so these are one po one possible source uh, of guidelines of course these guidelines are nothing new hmm? if we see these guidelines uh, we see that they they follow from the principles as it should be but in this case they are more specific specific to uh, web applications uh, let's see where are forms here Accessibility, uh, carbon solar, paper, pay layer, navigation, head type labels. Data entry, uh, yes, for example, partition. For example, this one. Multiple selections in a form. Use a checkbox if, we, if the user must uh, select one or more items instead of uh, um, making a selectable uh, uh, list. Uh, it's better to use a form a form uh, yeah you see that a good example is is one when you have to select more than one item so check boxes not radio buttons and you have also the negative example like uh, there are more than one name to be selected from these uh, windows uh, and you click uh, one after the other or you click with control or with command uh, an item so you can select one without deselecting the first one it's something more cumbersome okay so it's something that should not be done uh, 
um, ah okay the nice part is that if you go to this website okay uh, use guideline here it has a usability mistake because it tells you search by entering keywords and clicking the search button what is it huh? is there at the top where it should uh, where is there at the top where it should be but uh, the search button i don't see any search button i see a search field and a narrow button so even these designers no when they uh, probably they probably they e they you see uh, they added the search later so before they developed the, the guidelines and they were uh, everything nice then they added some search capability and they wanted to inform the user that search was no, now available and this section initially was right here at the, at the at the beginning because this paragraph we have added research value to, uh, to a searchable database you see and then we we will update the database this is it has been inserted later so at the beginning we had the search box this sentence and this box that were more or less close together i'm questioning why this sentence and this sentence are both written down they are they say basically the same thing so why should it you repeat them twice with different words put it once in a clear way so and so when they when once they updated the content this box was pushed down in the interface and now it's much farther from the search box makes it more difficult to to match it search i need to remember that i need there should be a search button somewhere my brain is looking for buttons i see no buttons here these look like buttons these look like buttons none of them is search ah, okay it's a search box which is far from here so how should i correct this mistake for example one very simple way is to replicate this search bar here keep it there where everybody's looking for them but if you are emphasizing the presence of the new bar just copy and paste it here with the same graphics as you had before so people can start using it and the next time they will find it where it is supposed to be even if where there are in two internal pages and this is not available here for this is one one of the hundred ways you can correct this mistake hmm? so it's not always easy even for usability professionals to to do the right thing especially when you're, when you're doing something in a hurry okay let's just add some text some explanation so you won't go through all the process hmm? uh, we also have some these other resource website guide i just link into books or resources that are f totally free to browse uh, is not such it's not so um, precise not so detailed is more on the principle level hmm? but again you can since it's free you can have a look uh, when maybe you are designing more the most difficult parts are the navigation and the forms basically hmm? all the rest more or less and so this is for the web the web is so wild it's so different and then there are specific environments exec execution environment for example here we have the, the guidelines page from apple human interface guidelines says the the, the address and apple tells me oh dear you want some guidelines for developing user interfaces first tell me about the device because they are different mac os ios watch os and tv os whatever os they have different sets of guidelines it's normal a button on the mac should look uh, behave differently from a button on a smartphone let's check for example in mac os if you go there you have a lot long list of uh, 
user interaction, system capability, visual design, icons, images, windows, views, menus, buttons, and so on. What they, what they say about uh, the, uh, the general principles here and all the details. For example, let's look about buttons. Buttons, checkboxes, gradient buttons, help button, image button, pop-up, push buttons. It's a normal case. And so they look like this. Uh, and they give you all the instruction how use a push button in a view not in a window frame it's a very detailed specific a window frame is something that happens with the, the graphical toolkit in mac um, in mac os display text uh, then rather than an icon in a push button so don't put icons inside buttons it's a rule if you want to be proficient in developing mac application you should learn this because this is the right way of, uh, to develop them. And so there's a reason why all the Mac applications look like the same, follow the same conventions, because somebody at Apple took the time to formalize all of this. It's not just a, a library of widgets and use them as you like. A button is a button. No. A button should be put in a different, in a specific place, with a specific color, with a specific behavior, with a specific text, and so on. And somebody formalized those. Is it the only way? No. It's the Apple way. It's the guidelines way. If you want consistency, you just have to follow this rule. With all the details, you say when to add the, the ellipses for the, the buttons, our brain is already able to process all the information intuitively. But there are rules for those. When a push button opens another window, dialog or up, then you need the dots. Otherwise, you should not, shouldn't have them. So the dots are not for abbreviating the button, but are for suggesting you that the next step will be a dialog window. Small clues that are formalized and you learn them without any effort, just by the sheer volume of repetitions, the number of times you see those conventions. That was for macOS. And if you go for iOS, what do they say about, bu about buttons? Uh, controls, buttons, it's much shorter. They, told, they talk about system buttons, uh, detail disclosure buttons. In this case, they are using an icon in a button. Oh, listen, it was forbidden in macOS, and it's normal in iOS. Is it a button with an icon, or is it a clickable icon? Mm. Okay, they call it a button, but visually they look the same. And they decided it was a good thing on a on a iOS because the space is precious. They don't want you don't want to to, to lose too much space, especially with a, a sequence of buttons like that. On a desktop environment or laptop, you don't care so much about the space. So let's write it down and don't put an icon that can be confusing. information buttons content buttons and so on and so there's less variability the the the, 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 the visual language of ios the grammar are less in the mobile interfaces there are less different elements than in the desktop interface uh, for example the scroll bars horizontal scroll bars don't belong to mobile they don't exist you have no guidelines for them hmm? and this is the apple way so that's why we say that they're specific to the technology. Once you start following some guidelines, doing some practical design, you should be aware of the technology that you're using. And the same goes for the other big ones. Microsoft, when they pushed the Windows 10 uh, interface with the universal uh, web apps, uh, they, de they designed and invented this fluent design style. Microsoft called it fluent. We started with Windows 8 with the tiles interface, okay? Everything flat. And they also have their own set of design rules. And by the way, they are trying to push the usage of, the, of Microsoft design rules also for applications running on iOS if they use the Universal Toolkit also to Android. And uh, for example, let's select so you can create the look and feel of uh, fluent design application also for web applications and so on. If you go to Windows, which is the main case, for example, controls, 
this is more it's less design oriented and it's more developer oriented so even finding navigating this set of guidelines is different uh, it's, uh, so for example we were discussing about buttons um, menus navigation people picker search introduction to controls and events desk inputs ecco, buttons is there so in this case it will tell you for example in that in the exam language for implementing a button you have a set of different classes so it's more like you say more developer oriented so this will not be a designer a pure designer not a programmer would not be very familiar with this language with this kind of description because this already tells you how to write code for that so it's it's in some way it's skipping the design step and it's going to the coding step in a way of course there are design suggestions no, like here okay which button is the right one you use a button in this case you repeat button in that case you drop down button in that case and so on so it's more like this is the user interface component and these are the ways in, in which you can use it in apple it was the reverse these are the visual cases and these how are the rules uh, for using the components for reaching that effect mm -hmm. the information is the same but it's presented in a complementary way mm -hmm. of course the other one google <coughs> with this uh, material design again if you go if we go there and look for how google design components developer resources if we go to the design we have all the principles and in this case they, div they divide between the material foundation so the general way of uh, designing applications so the general principles how to implement navigation how to think about screens and the guidelines themselves so the guidelines are here and uh, okay uh, for example if we where is that I, I always get lost here components these are part of the guidelines buttons and again we have all the information about uh, this component how to use it where to use it which principles are used for motivating the guidelines that are that follow the types of buttons and the explanation these buttons are typically used for less important actions for example these are used for the emphasis for the most important actions and so on so in this documentation is not just the programmer documentation the events that it generates but it's the reasoning about the context in which you should use that elements instead of others and the other uh, the interesting part also here is this initial components page where they show you mm, that the application is not just uh, individual widgets put together in some way but there are patterns the top bar should contain some information always the bottom bar also if, if it exists it should contain some action and so it gives you also criteria or what to put at the top uh, what to put at the bottom so also the layout issues and not just control issue or individual element issues and so all, all of them okay this one is another website which is more general called uh, user interface design patterns this is also good uh, for examples this is nice because the, this website uh, which is not connected to any specific technology is more on the website gives you some good examples for each uh, of the uh, interfaces for example uh, expendable input it's uh, 
people can also contribute to screenshot and then the community will select the best one to illustrate a given example so for the web for web application probably the most uh, useful are these uh, this one the ui patterns and the uh, usability that gov guidelines they apply more to the web hmm. and uh, in the other case they apply to specific technologies of course uh, we cannot go in and we don't want probably to go into detail of any of this i just wanted to give you a, a flavor and leave the message that they each of these set of guidelines gives you practical instruction very detailed instructions and they are all different so you need to follow in a way if you if we want to follow a set of guidelines we choose one technology and then try to follow those more or less they do the same thing because they implement the same principles but they cannot be, be directly compared to each other and can it's not easy to switch from one modality to the other they are really technology dependent so that's why it's a less uh, reusable knowledge hmm? principles are the interaction principle are always the same but the details and when you know uh, microsoft or google google will come out with the next uh, user interface uh, uh, conventions they will develop new guidelines that will be different of course the basic elements are the same title label bu button text input uh, uh, um, canvas uh, for images and so on but they are used in different ways in different contexts with different tools so it's something that is ever changing okay if we if you went back some years ago we saw that uh, all the maybe also the graphics of websites were different the graphics of the apps were different why because these guidelines are evolving are constantly changing and each of them is independent from the other and what you see there is that there are also competition because microsoft developed these guidelines and want want you to use them also for developing ios applications instead of the ios guidelines and wants them wants you to also use the fluent design into android application instead of the material design ones it's also a matter of marketing of uh, of diffusion of this uh, and of course if you are developing a fluent design with android you will be using android components of course it's running on android but in a way that follows the design guidelines by microsoft so it's actually your choice hmm? you, we, what we cannot do is to mix them hmm? because otherwise we'll, we'll create a monster and unfortunately we cannot study all of them you need to set up some time to study one of them just to browse to spend some time familiarizing with some examples and so on and uh, but uh, of course we cannot uh, go into details uh, to, all, to all of them and uh, you cannot real developers are specialized uh, in uh, in each of these okay so this was the the first step you remember we started this path about uh, we, we, with these pictures so we're trying to understand uh, based on the theories what are the guidelines for helping us implementing good interfaces what we start tomorrow is the evaluation step so imagine we are we define the goals we define the tasks uh, we try to create a, a prototype or the, or an interface by following as much as possible these guidelines how can we check whether we did a good work okay so this was the will be the goal for the next two classes more or less okay have a good evening <coughs>